Felix and Tony. Okay, welcome back to another episode of On the Trail with Felix and Tony. I'm Felix Camacho, former governor of Guam and candidate for the upcoming 2022 gubernatorial election. Uh, joining me every week and every moment on the trail of the 2022 campaign is my running mate, Senator Tony Atta. Off a day. Off a day. Welcome, Senator. And so we started this uh, podcast at the beginning of our campaign leading up to the primary elections. And so now... Uh, that we are past the primary, it's time to shift gears as we head into the general election. Uh, we want to invite everyone to join us, Republicans, Democrats, Independents. We welcome all. And we thank you for voting in the primary election, and we encourage everyone to vote in the general election on November 8th. It was a low voter turnout, uh, 40% uh, to be exact of the people came out, so that remaining 60% you can't sit this one out. You've got to get out there, and you've got to engage, and you've got to participate, and you've got to vote. So Let come on. voices be heard. Amen. Well, all right. Gov, clearing the record? Absolutely nothing to clear this time around, so we did good last time. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this week on the trail, um, uh, the recap of uh, the week, and uh, first and foremost was the primary election, post-primary, and so how— uh, what was your, your take out there when you were going around? Uh, it was a wonderful experience. Of course, you know, we started the day early. We started off with uh, going to Mass and, you know, just honoring the Lord, and then we hit the road. Uh, of course, we went off to, to Muning. Well, actually, we had some breakfast, of course, and uh, that was a good one. Yeah, it was. It sure was. Um, we had to energize for the day, and then, of course, uh, we started off in Tamuning. Did you go to Sinahania first? Yeah, I went to Sinahania first. We okay. Annette and I, we cast our, our votes uh, with the Maya, and uh, from there we headed out. And I think you and First Lady did the same thing, right? Cash yeah, votes but you, that. what was your route? So we went from Sinahania, and uh, we took the the eastern side of the eastern island. Eastern side, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we started off Sinahania, Mani uh, Aganya Heights, and then Manila, Chalapago Ward, and headed on down that way. And ended up eating in, in Arahan? In Arahan. So we <laughs> we made it just in time for lunch in, in Arahan where we met you guys. Right. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really nice to see uh, uh, Auntie Chai down there and the family oh, yeah. and, you know, just so much, you know. It, it was just great, and, you know. It's just, um, for me, I uh, as I went around, I tried to be courteous. And, of course, when they offer food, I would eat a little bit here and there. But there's one that I really had to, I struggled hard on. <laughs> it was down in Agate, in, uh -huh. in Hoggett Town. And I went to Mike's camp. And I think it was Sunny Conception who had made this big pot. It was oxtail adobo. Wow. And then they had another big pot of, it was patas babui, uh -huh. pig's feet. <laughs> and uh, there was a whole bunch of other things. But I, I figured if I ate that with a, on a plate of rice, I'd have a hard time struggling and staying awake as we went throughout the day. So I, um, I had to pull up some uh, discipline and not, not indulge in it, but it was wonderful. So we went on the western yeah. side, and, and, um, and it was just wonderful stopping by every single camp and um, greeting as many people as we can in every camp, mm -hmm. in our camp, in St. Nicholas Camp, and even uh, Lou and Josh. Yeah, and when we got to uh, Inaraha, uh, Yamatic, Humatak, um, Fred, Fred actually makes a great cup of coffee, man. I don't know if you had a cup of coffee down there, but Fred, Fred Goffigan. Fred Goffigan. Oh man, he he didn't offer me one. Uh, he made a, a got, nice fresh pot of out. coffee, and I said, "Hey, he goes, <laughs> hey, you guys want something?" I said, "Well, I could get some coffee." And I said, "Wow, who made Fred? Fred, Fred made the coffee, right?" Yeah, so you know, I know where to go for coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, you know, um, I I think that. It was an exciting night as we, as of course, as we rounded up um, all the camps, uh, ended up in, in Jigo, mm -hmm. and then, of course, Dedido. And uh, the wife was there waving and, and, and greeting all of us and helping all of our people. I had decided I was going to go back down to Tamuning and, and check on the family and everyone else that was over there by JFK. And, of course, after that, being able to get home, take a nice uh, 
nice warm shower and freshen up and head on down to headquarters uh, where we gathered with all our supporters. Yeah, and waited for the results to start coming in. Uh, Election Commission was a little bit behind, but uh, I guess they figured out the kinks and then the 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 vote started to roll in uh, so yes yeah oh yeah so that was something different yeah it i think it was uh you know being able to get on the podcast live live and uh not have media dictate to us what we wanted to talk about it was uh, it was our podcast it was our message and uh really appreciate all those uh mr boo that was behind it and, and staff so fantastic yeah, they they took a lot of uh, a lot. It took a lot of their time to re, uh, to set everything up, yeah. get us ready for the podcast and uh, going live, and it, it was just great. I mean, live and recorded. Uh, yeah, it's it's basically the the same thing. It's just yeah. uh, you know our recorded versions uh, go out a little bit uh, later. Yeah, and we look forward to doing the same in the general. Oh, definitely. All right. All right. Well, one big thing uh, this week, of course, was. Um, we had the Lincoln dinner, Lincoln Day dinner that happens typically annually. But I understand, Senator, this is the first time in how many years that they've had it. Um, it's been a while, you know, yeah. um, because of uh, just different circumstances. Yeah. But, uh, you know, w- this was actually later in the year. Uh, Lincoln mm. Day dinner typically happens in February. You know? Ah, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, February, September, we mm-hmm. celebrated Lincoln Dinner, so it was a great time for everyone to get together. And w- what were your thoughts on it? Uh, there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of happiness. I think people were were so excited to be all together again. You know, in in the, down at Dusitani, I believe we had over fifty six tables. Every single one of them full. Mm-hmm. It was overflow. The traffic getting in. I, I think a lot of people uh, had to turn away because they were not able to find adequate parking. And so had to leave the venue or not even attend uh, the event. Right. But just excitement of everybody coming together uh, from all the different village organizations and all the supporters of the Republican Party. But the added bonus was to have um, Sabrina Salas Matanani uh, sitting with us that night. It was it was just absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. And uh, many of the supporters from the uh, Mike and Nicholas and and Sabrina's team come on board and, and join up with our village organization. So it was it was very festive. It was very happy. That's yeah. what I felt. People were so happy. Yeah, they were. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I understand that we have a, a video that was uh, put together of that. And if we could play it, I think our audience would love to see it. Oh, absolutely. Mr. Boo, do we have that video queued up? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, uh, go. let's take a look. Take some it. time and listen to this. Because he went eight years as a governor. He saw that. The island was in ruin, and slowly, one day at a time, he rebuilt the island. All those beautiful new schools, the police stations in the north and the south. Governor Felix and me had something in common. We both decided we got to focus on affordable housing. He rebuilt the island. Ecclesiastes says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, together we answered that call, all of you did. We rolled up our sleeves and did honest work. I have seen our island in good seasons, and I have seen our island in bad seasons. As a man of faith, I will tell you that it is biblical that good times prevail under good leadership. And bad times prevail under bad leadership. In those 16 years under Republican conservative leadership, it didn't matter if you were in or out. For those who were willing to help, we worked together on solutions that took our island from a deep recession to prosperity, and we improve the quality of life for all our people. It is time for a great people again. It is time to answer the call to help our people. It is time for a new season. It is time for 
What an amazing night. That was really a great night yeah, too. Absolutely it was. Your speech was was fabulous. Um I think uh a lot of people in the crowd had really took took time to really listen to what you had to say and the delivery of it and everything was just really on point and uh you know we had everything in there. You you, you spoke about yeah. just about a little bit of everything and uh, putting it into video now it's just uh is truly amazing and I think that the people of Guam will truly see what Camacho Ad is about. They'll see what Governor Felix Camacho wants to bring back, you know, great leadership to our island, you know. And we're gonna do that in this administration. We're gonna do it together. Definitely, sir. All right. Uh, I know that you attended the Graphic Center uh, 30th anniversary celebration. Yes, uh, you know, they, they celebrated 30 years and uh, it was really nice to see that uh, they were all coming together. Bubba B played that night at mm. uh, wow. at Graphic Center. Sue was, she's such a such a wonderful, wonderful lady. She goes, you know what? This is what it's about. You know, we we make the investments into our into our company mm. so that we can continue to uh, produce the quality of work that we do. And you know, it, it's great just to see our work out there. And I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got to just ensure that you know our island the sustainability of our island continues to grow right and um we are we're able to just get people in and you know keep these jobs going and with all the investments that uh, she made in the company you know and that's why when you see the quality of um, look at our lincoln day uh, dinner booklet mm -hmm. the quality of the of the products that are coming out is uh you know excellent it you don't even have to import anything else anymore you know just get it printed right here in uh right at graphic center uh, so congratulations to graphic center on your 30th anniversary congratulations thank yeah. you Let's well we got i don't know if you saw the media circulating all the photos of uh our dinner with the uh, congressman mike and nicholas and uh yeah what's your thoughts on that <laughs> I can say uh, we're extremely grateful um, and uh, for the grace of God, you know, that uh, he brought us together. As you know, we're family and, and we got together and talked as friends and family. Mm -hmm. We certainly did. We, we did talk a bit about the election and the electorate and the low voter turnout and, and such. But, but other than that, I, I, I really, it was really a time to just get together and, you know, for me to share also with my life experiences, going back to my father. Uh, Carlos Camacho, the former governor, the late governor of Guam, last elected, uh, last appointed, first elected governor. And uh, I remember the 1974 election mm -hmm. where he eventually lost to Ricky Bordalio in a runoff. And as a sophomore in high school, the experience I, I, I felt, uh, and that loss was, was really hard on, on a young man. You know, like like that. I was about roughly 15 years old or so at that time, and and uh, it was very emotional. But I, 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 I um, after that, shortly moved on with life. Right. You know, and continued my studies. But uh, that was my first loss of experience within the family. Eventually, going on, and I, as uh, we talked about leaving, uh, going into into politics, I was successful as a senator. But in 1998, I teamed up with former Governor Joseph Atta, and we lost that election to Carl and uh, and Madeline. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that was uh, that was a loss now on mine on my side. Getting out of politics eventually in the 2016 election, I ran against Madeline Bordalio, of course, for a congressional seat and lost that. And so. Uh, the seasons of life, you have your peaks, you have your valleys, and, and that's what we talked about. It's, you, you know, life moves on, and, and, and how can we help each other moving forward? Yeah. And, and that's where we're at right now. And the, the picture circulated. It was um, meant to, to be sent to just one individual, but you know how things go. Yeah. It, it got out, and it, it went viral, and, uh, of course, media began to... to uh, Speculate and talk about it, and yeah. Yeah, and ask for an answer. <laughs> so the, the campaign did... did uh, 
team did it issue a statement that uh, was recorded, of yeah, course. Yeah, and then, you know, the media got a hold also of our photo with uh, Ted Nelson Jr. Absolutely. Yeah, and then they also got a hold of our, our um, a picture of uh, us with Sabrina at our Lincoln dinner. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, they've been, I guess the media is uh, keeping up now with <laughs> what's going on in our on our side of the uh, the political world. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, the election begins, and um, there's, th we of course, we have a, uh, a debate coming up on the 7th of, of uh, September. It'll be a forum, rather, uh, between the governor and myself, sponsored by the Guam Chamber of Commerce, and uh, look forward to that. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, and I think that's where you we're going to be hearing what mm. the, the the community what the business community actually what questions yeah. do they have for you know yourself and and the governor and um we'll see what what's on their minds as well because well, I, yeah. you know when we go out into the into the community and we talk to the different businesses mm -hmm. you know always first on their mind is crime you know crime has always been a, a hot topic and um, the economy yeah. Also, you know, there's there there are always there's always discussions about what's going on with um, government operations mm -hmm. and and the the need for for them to go into full scale operation um, and uh, provide the services that they request and need. You know, especially the regulatory agencies and permitting a agencies and the like. And we'll be right back. Business makes the world go round. The Camacho Ara team's approach to good government stands on seven pillars of opportunity, and business development is central to their platform. Felix and Tony are both businessmen who know the role that government should play in encouraging and supporting economic growth. Please visit CamachoAraForGuam.com for information on how Felix and Tony will help our economy rebuild and prosper. Camacho Ara, taking care of business. I'm Felix Camacho, and I approve this message. And now, back on the trail with Felix and Tony. Now, can you share a bit about the legislative um, budget bill that you you were engaged in for roughly two weeks or so, maybe yeah, a week and a half? Almost, almost uh, about maybe three weeks. At, three uh, weeks yeah. worth. But you know, it um, finally the the final uh, budget was uh, passed, and it's over a billion dollars. And it's you know, in my opinion, uh, it looks like we we're going to start out with a short four already because the section 30 funding that was appropriated in the budget bill was mm -hmm. at 74 point i think 74.9 million or 70 something around there but the letter that we got the letter that was given by doi was saying that guam will be getting 70.6 million mm -hmm. so already there's a shortfall yeah and you know starting out on the wrong foot unbalanced it's uh <clears throat> it's going to be interesting, All right. and I think that um, as the as the year moves on and uh, we uh, we find ourselves in in Adelu, uh it's a good thing we already have our sleeves rolled up because all we're going to be doing is running after that. You know, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna hit hit the ground running and uh, get get our government in control and you know put things into perspective so that uh, yeah. we don't see any more of the. Uh, the hardships placed on the backs of our people you know a lot of businesses have uh, have come out and said that uh, you know w what are we doing you know how is it that we can move forward i mean mm -hmm. a lot of the concerns as well is you know when um department of uh, labor came out and talking about the the um labor uh, the unemployment rate going down mm -hmm. but when you look at the the report it was you know a lot of uh, foreign workers that came in that yeah build that up and then you know gov guam also increase their their uh, yeah so senator budget. i think it's a good good transition into the topic of the day which really we want to talk a bit about uh business and economy although understanding i'm going into a forum uh, against the governor in a, in a few days mm -hmm. so, so we can touch lightly on this and then yeah, move very on lightly. yeah 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 but <laughs> you know again as you well know yeah. our island uh it faces unprecedented uh uncertainty with uh great fiscal social and economic challenges and over the past two and a half years, we, we have suffered through the longest and most severe economic downturn in, in our history. Uh, that's what we hear a lot about as we go about to the different businesses and talk to people uh, on the streets is uh, how many have experienced the burden of lost jobs and lost opportunities. Many have lost their homes. Uh, they've lost hope. And so uh, we need to really 
think about all the issues in front of us and, and the choice before the people of Guam really that they're facing this November is that every voter will be asked to choose between the status quo, the, the status quo of rising crime and, and cost of living that is out of control, or our team, which is a team of proven and tested leadership, mm -hmm. having served uh, myself as two terms as governor and coming back. So we have a plan you know, where every Guamanian who values freedom, who works hard, uh, who, who has big dreams, they can achieve whatever they want to pursue. And so we, uh, we have a, a lot ahead of us right now. I know that um, we need to look at our government and how it's restructured. Many of the issues that businesses have out there are, are the, the, the services that they're receiving from GovGuam. How can we improve the system? How can we simplify it? And, and that's been the task of most administrations is how do we streamline? How do we use technology? Right. How do we um, provide the services that our people need? using modern technology and perhaps even a reduction in the workforce that may not be uh, all that necessary anymore in how we can bring technology but provide the services that are needed and um, and then programs that are maybe not necessarily um, not necessarily required but they face many challenges so we we need to take a look at all the sim all all the programs throughout the government of Guam and I think gov just one one issue that is at everyone's uh, uh, radar mm -hmm. is trying to get a driver's license. Something simple as a driver's license that, you know, they have to be out of work for three, four hours just to stand in line to get a renewal. And if you want to make an appointment, it's four or five months out. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, those are something that, that low hanging fruit is something that yeah. we can actually work on and, and improve it immediately yeah immediately you know you know one program that uh we just we just uh had the the privilege of of uh, enjoying was we went and saw guma g-u-m-a and support local we were just there at the uh, ganya shopping center with all the local vendors right uh, out there so there are examples of 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 programs that do work that benefit the people and here we had all these young entrepreneurs that are using their craft and their skill to provide services and products for sale what did you think about that because i i saw you you were going all around to every booth and, and just yeah. <laughs> i know you walked away with a couple of bags i i sure did and yeah. you know i was selling uh monica guzman and uh marvin manabusin yeah um you know this is really great what they're doing you know helping helping entrepreneurs right uh with a with a leg up getting them started and then watching them yeah. as they grow I mean, these are our businesses that are set up in their homes and then they just bring them out and, you know, do what they can out in the, you know, whenever they have pop ups or, you yeah. know, different events. But imagine these are these are right there in their in you know, that individual's home and wherever they, they stay. So they don't need a storefront. They don't need overhead costs. Everything is controlled and they're controlling it. And I even told Monica, I said, hey, Monica, uh, you know, this is actually one of the legs of our economy when right think about it when you continue to give the individuals the ability to grow and let them see where they would yeah. go from there you know you give them that that uh the tools that they need the business plan the, you know what it takes to start up and and yeah. moving on you know all those people there are a proof that it is possible mm -hmm. and two the products are made locally, you know? Yeah, so if we continue to cultivate the entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. innovation for our locals, that's uh, certainly part of building the economy. And typically in the United States, uh, it is well known that the small businesses are the ones that uh, combine, provide the greatest number of jobs in a, when you combine it all or cumulatively. So we need to continue to, to follow that model. And... Um, even beyond that, you know, we we really need to think. One of the things that I'm concerned about, and many are, as we visited, um, for example, Payless, uh, um, and and we we talked to to many people in leadership there in, in their respective roles, and the discussion was about food security mm -hmm. and supply and demand, and how do we how do we resolve those issues? So uh, of course, the the, the rising in inflation rate and the cost of food products. Uh, there are concerns uh, globally about what's happening in some places of Europe 
where they, um, the environmentalists have proved, uh, pushed this carbon neutral uh, event and going electric. And now they're talking about going nitrogen neutral. And uh, that is an, an absolute essential ingredient for, for what you need uh, in fertilizers for the soil. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have the fertilizer uh, that you can put into the soil and you can't produce the food that you normally would, you're beginning to see now produce and products are, are unavailable. If we look at the, the, the nation or the country of Australia, uh, that, I think, is a real template to see that this new global reset and what the powers to be are trying to accomplish in the United States and worldwide, globally, is a real indi- indication of what's happening. Interestingly, they are not allowing local farmers to sell to the local population. Everything has to go through a distribution route now where it goes from the, from the producer or the farmer to a wholesaler who then get it, gets it onto the retail uh, and, and onto the shelves. Uh, the problem being that um, it now means the entire system of from, from ground to the shelf is con- controlled by a certain entity. And when they have a monopoly and a control over that, and people can't even buy from their local farmer, mm-hmm. or, or um, then, then they're in trouble. So we need to begin to see what's happened in America the farmlands that have been bought up by foreign entities and other individuals, very wealthy individuals, where there is water, where there is fertile soil, uh, there's going to be a real battle for the production of food. And so on Guam, I, th- I believe we really need to begin to take a look at food security in getting farmers and, and getting even commercial grade. Yes, we continue to support the um, individual homeowner that has uh, something they're, they're growing in their backyard and to small and medium scale, but we need to begin to think about large-scale commercial, agricultural, and, and also produce farmers on Guam so that we can provide, provide as much as possible for our local population. Yeah. And then also team up with uh, Rota, with Tinian, with Saipan, throughout the Marianas and throughout Micronesia. So we're thinking about things like that. Yeah, that that's a great way to go, you know, because yeah. uh, we just don't know what what the future holds for, you know, on mm-hmm. on uh, on produce and you know, food security. So Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, you know, Tony, we 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 talk about uh, a lot of the suffering out there, as we've I've mentioned, but um, one other group that we come across a lot are the individuals that are working, the mom and and dad that are working one maybe two jobs, or both husband and wife are working. They're considered middle class and uh, have not been able to qualify for many of the benefits and and the monies that have been given out by the government, uh, federal dollars. And so they're hurting and they're saying, you know, we're the ones that uh, have fallen uh, between the cracks and and you've got to help them. So we need to lift our brothers and sisters who are struggling, those in the middle class and future generations that need to inherit a legacy of growth and prosperity that I think we can all be proud of. So. That's yeah, what we're, we're looking at. Well, you know, now that we've uh, we've uh, talked about these, the topic of the day, business and economy, why don't we um, jump off into questions from social media? Sure, absolutely. What, do we have questions from social media? Yes, we do. And speaking of um, uh, economy, um, we got a question in from Gerald Beach Chute. His question is, is there anything that can be done to address the high shipping costs? Mm. Well, shipping, of course, has been there. Been um, there been um, delays at the ports. There have been transportation issues within the United States uh, coming from all distribution points into into the ports of uh, entry and for export into places like Guam. So delays have happened, as we well know. Uh, it's been well publicized about that. But uh, fuel costs have risen also, and uh, we're well aware of that. So that has affected it. I, I had discussions with both um, individuals from Matson and also APL, the two primary shippers here, and, and they operate under different licenses. As you know, uh, there's the Jones Act, and Matson, being a uh, shipping company based out of Hawaii and uh, the West Coast, uh, out of Oakland, they, um, they primarily have small to medium-sized ships that are made uh, or U.S. hauled, so they're manufactured in shipyards in say Philadelphia, and uh, and they're f- U.S. flagged and they're always also U.S. crewed. The the crew members are, are U.S. citizens, and so because of that, Matson has um, 
access to markets that are unique to themselves, you, markets f within the United States. And with the cabotage laws they're able to bring in from the West Coast through Hawaii and into Guam. On the other and you have APL that is operating under an MSP license. It's a military support program. And under that shipping program, they also have um, um, other, other programs. And, but I, I feel that um, there is some subsidy that is available to them. We need to find ways that we can pursue an exemption, even temporary, to the Jones Act. Because if we can get goods from, from uh, foreign hold ships from other markets throughout Asia, even looking at Central and South America, to bring produce into Guam um, w using, using um, they may come from the U.S., they may come from elsewhere, but that's one way of, of doing it. Access to other markets where the shipping costs are reduced and the distances are, are so much less. So the shipping costs, the fuel costs are so much greater, are so much less. Another Another example is, and I know the environmentalists would not be happy with this, but there has always been consideration of dredging and deepening our, our harbor at APRA to allow for larger vessels, expanding the, 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 um, the ports and, and, and so that they would be able to, um, to have larger ships come in. On economies of scale, if you're able to bring in larger ships with greater volume, then uh, we, we can, that uh, would allow for a reduction. In, in the cost of goods, um, there are um, there's so many other other areas of concern, of course, that that, uh, that we can look at. But you have to recognize that when ships are coming into Guam with their 20 foot or 40 foot equivalent containers full of merchandise from the United States or sh coming in from Asia, they come in full, but they they leave empty. Right. So they would then load up with empty containers and take it to another port which would then be used for the global market and uh, shipped uh, going in, into China, eventually out to the United States. So the cost of the shippers, both Madsen and APL, are front-loaded. They need to make their money on, on, on the containers they're bringing in on the front end mm -hmm. because on the back end is where they leave. They, if only Guam could come up with, and this is another thing we need to take a look at, uh, if we could somehow create industry that would assemble or produce something for export into another market, into Asia, for example, with Made in Guam USA, that would be very uh, attractive. So now you, the cost can also be shared with goods, goods going out, right. and the shipping companies can then make some money uh, by exporting out of Guam. So we do need to look at the front-end cost and the back-end cost and work with them, but also with local industry on what can we do, what can we produce out of Guam for export. Yeah. Did, didn't you say at one time that Guam used to manufacture yeah. watches? There was a garment uh, manufacturing way back and also watches uh, that yeah. were made on Guam. But of course, lobbyists and other members of Congress um, struck it down. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we do need um, someone for fighting for us hard in, in Washington. Yeah, definitely. And uh, you know, we're looking forward to that. You know, we get Jim Moylan in there, he'll be able yeah. to, uh, you know, lobby for that and get you know absolutely so we can get that back out here i mean cnmi used to have the garment factory for the longest time many years mm -hmm. as a matter of fact my sister carmen used to be a, a manager for one of the garment factories up there they were producing clothing for gap and mm -hmm. you know different uh different uh name brands but it, it was really amazing to see how they were getting the products made up there in the cnmi and then mm -hmm. shipping them back out and then you go up to uh you know, you go to Target or somewhere, you go to Gap in uh, in Minnesota, and you see <laughs> made in the CNMI. I mean, it, it was really nice to see way back then. And so yeah. hopefully, you know, something like that can be yeah. revisited and see what we can do to absolutely do that also for our, our economy again, once again. Yes, absolutely. Um, any other questions? Yes. From Zach Hesita, what books and authors have most influenced your views on politics and governance? Oh, I, you know, it's interesting, but I, I'd have to say the, the Bible. I'm a student of the Bible, and leadership lessons are, are, are you would find it all throughout, oh, yeah. all throughout the Bible. You'd, you'd find many of these um, lessons from, from leaders uh, there. But there was one book I, I read, uh, I'd, I'd say 20 years ago, and it was called uh, 
The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And um, I think I still have that book. Is it on the shelf? Any dust on it? Uh, it's, yeah, well, it's, <laughs> I, I dust it off every once in a while. Time to dust it off and uh, open that up. But yeah, that was one book I, I felt that had a lot of, um, of value to me. Uh, there are others um, that I'm reading right now. And uh, I, th I think also audiobooks. I listen to uh, a lot of podcasts, yeah. and um, I think one of them that's pretty cool is Joe Rogan. Oh, nice. He's a bit rough around the edges, but oh, you know the the people they bring in. Uh, Lance Wallnau is another guy, yeah. <laughs> like uh, I, Mario Morello. I mean, there's uh, so many of them out there that I, I like to listen to. Kent Christmas, you, you know me. Yeah, I I read the um, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective Leaders by mm, Stephen. Very Cook. good one. Very good, very good reading, and perhaps you know a good recommendation to read and the podcast that uh i, I listened to was uh master random you know hey, hey. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great <laughs> podcast Mr. Boo. Th the episode that i i was really um oh, there's a couple of episodes there that he did with uh former governor cowbell but the one episode that um uh, i really like and for animal lovers that uh um want to hear a, a very touching story of um uh, a life partner and that's his that was his dog kona Oh. who uh, was he brought back from the States with him after he graduated college. And uh, Kona was a, a part of our lives for many years until uh, just last year when, uh, you know, Kona uh, succumbed to his uh, illnesses. But uh, you, you got to really listen to the uh, listen to the uh, the podcast and how Kona, how my grandson came into the world and Kona left the world. It, it's just it, it's so touching how Kona. He he knew my daughter-in-law was pregnant, and it's it seemed like he just wanted to stay until Ryan came. Wow! So you know when they moved in, they were renovating their house, and they they moved into their house. Kona was still still holding on, you know. And then we thought that when she gave birth, then Kona would no. Yeah. It's when she brought him home. And Kona uh, licked his feet. Then that's when he felt he he felt his duties were were, uh, were fulfilled. That he stayed and uh, waited till our little boy came home. And that's when he decided to uh, go to all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but wonderful. a really really wonderful uh, episode to listen to. It's on Master Random. I'm not sure what episode that is. Uh, Mr. Boo? I'm not sure. It's an audio obituary. It's on audio obituary. I'll look for it. Yeah. Thank look you. at it and, and listen to it. It's really great. Oh, thank you for yeah. sharing that uh, heart heartfelt uh, story and podcast. And, well, you know, this should wrap things up. And um, would you mind uh, just letting us know what's going on with the. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, once again, we uh, ask you to please get your voices heard. And if you're not registered to vote but would like to for the general elections, Voter registration is now open. There are several ways to get registered. You can go online to gec.guam.gov backslash register or go visit the Guam Election Commission in the Oka building in Timuning or call our HQ at 671-475-2222 and we can probably get a registrar out to your workplace if uh, you have employees that are not registered and would like to register. We can okay. do that for you and... Uh, or if you want to register yourself, we'll be able to register you, uh, register you as well. Uh, you can ask questions through our social media at Camacho Ada for Guam. Engage with us on the trail by asking us questions through any of our social media platforms on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Your questions can be sent to us in text, audio, or video. You know, we haven't had an audio, uh, audio or video uh, message. <laughs> huh? I would like to look forward to seeing that. Uh, we look forward to engaging with you in the digital space and answering your questions on the show. Joining us, uh, join us for upcoming events this week. Uh, we got the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Gubernatorial Forum on Wednesday, September seventh, at the Hilton, and it begins at what time, sir? It begins at um, I think I believe eleven thirty. Eleven thirty, sharp. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go, and it's going to be in the Micronesia Ballroom, I yes. believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then we got. Um, Oh, this coming month, this weekend is Labor Day weekend. Labor Day. So when you guys go out to Labor Day, enjoy yourselves, have fun, uh, be safe, uh, don't drink and drive. 
Down at Epau Beach. Down at Epau Beach. And also known as the Joseph Flores Memorial Park. There we go. Yes. And then the Salvation Army Lighthouse Recovery Center op open house is on Thursday. And um, it's wonderful. I know they have new leadership there that we had uh, the privilege of meeting. So, yeah, definitely. Go uh, see them. Uh, we hope to uh, we hope that you continue to join us on the trail. It's exciting time for both of us and our Camacho added team. So with that. So, again, we thank you very much for the time. Uh, and we look forward to next episode with Felix and Tony. Thank you. This is Monsi. Everybody have a good day. God bless.